Hey, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone Jones here again. Um, this is how to become a California licensed contractor for 2021. This is a five part series. This is three of five. So uh, if you're starting out on this video, make sure you go ahead and check out one and two first and then come back to uh, uh, this video, which is number three. Let's get started. All right, what to expect if application is accepted, okay? We fill out the application, we send in a payment, and we'll talk about payments and how much things cost just uh, in a few, but we, we fill out the application and we send it in, okay? So <clears throat> what, what goes on with filling out this application? Application uh, uh, is a very serious thing. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble uh, on this application, if you were to lie, falsify some information, or just try to uh, not be clear uh, on this application. You wanna read this application thoroughly. Uh, it's a lot of information on there. I mean, it's, a, it's probably five sheets of paper before you get to the application that tells you how to fill out the application, okay? so. Uh, uh, please understand that. So once your application is submitted and accepted, and also too, at the Construction Entrepreneurial School and Services, if you sign up with the school, uh, we will help you out with that application. We'll help you out with filling out your uh, work verification form. Um, also filling out, we'll also help you filling out um, any of the uh, background the criminal background form as well, if you have to fill that out. Um, so let's get started. So uh, application submitted and accepted. Exciting time. They have accepted your application. Uh, during this time, uh, once your application is, is, is received by them, you get a application fee number. With that application fee number, you get a PIN with it as well. Now, what that's used for is to check the status online. You go to the CSLB website and uh, you hit application status or secured application status. One for secure, you have to use your PIN. The other is open to the public, okay? Anyone can go in there and look at the status of your application uh, if they know where to look. So you'll get this application fee number which if you pass turns into your license number. Okay, it's not the same number, but your application, you start out with your application fee number until you get a license number, okay? Um, during that process um, of submitting your application, once it's accepted, they're gonna go ahead and send you a, uh, a live scan fingerprinting package where you have to go get live scan fingerprinting, okay? Usually you can get it done, they'll send you a list of approved locations as well. But usually you can get it done at the local police department or uh, usually they have a local uh, university or some sometimes some small live scan locations in your area that you can actually go to. Um, um, but listen, who must be fingerprinted? Everyone on the application must be fingerprinted. So let me give you an example. If you set up a corporation and you have officers on that corporation, those officers should be on the application to the state board. All those officers, once they're on that application, all those officers get live scan fingerprinting. Okay. Also know that this is this is a bit confusing here. When you submit your uh, your application. Section five, okay? Section five, page three, okay? It asks a, a, a series of questions, okay? And on those questions, and it's also on page four as well, but on those questions, you just fill out, it, you don't have to take those that sheet and multiply by how many members you have in your corporation. If any, if you or any of the members check yes for the box, they have to provide the supported documentation to that yes box on those sheets, okay? Uh, and it's dealing with a lot of uh, uh, 
talking about being uh, blacklisted from any organizations, talking about um, uh, have you ever filed or know on someone that filed or family member that filed that got their license revoked? Have you been uh, have, you, have you ever had a license revoked, denied, suspended? Do you have any liens, judgments, uh, claims against you? Uh, those things, those are the kind of questions they will be asking. Uh, do you owe the Franchise Tax Board or the Board of Equalization, the BOE, um, or the FTB? Uh, they're going to be asking those questions as well, okay? Uh, so everyone gets fingerprinted on the application, okay? Live scan uh, operator, you, like I said, you can go anywhere as far as that, okay? Uh, the board don't deal with that. You, you pay a false small fee to the board, but you pay the live scan operator to actually do the live scan fingerprinting, okay? Now, listen, it's very important that you are truthful about what you answer on this application, especially when it comes to uh, page three, page four, and the criminal uh, background uh, form, okay? Because they're going to, that, that information uh, gets submitted to the uh, Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation, the DOJ and the FBI. So all your information is going to come back to them. Don't think that, um, oh, it happened too long ago. No, you need to put it on the application. If you got in trouble at a young age, as a teenager, you're like, oh, uh, uh, it's clear. Hey, listen, even if you got it expunged, I will put it on there, okay? Um, a lot of times you get things expunged, you should be okay, but they want to know about everything, okay? Do not try to not put it on there. Put everything on there that you have been through, if you have been through something on the criminal justice side, okay? Uh, the board may require you to answer some tough questions. Um, during this process, don't think that you're just going to skate through it. The board may have questions about uh, your background, may have questions about uh, uh, the company that you work with, uh, individuals that's uh, 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 verifying your work experience. I mean, a lot of these questions uh, tend to uh, ward off individuals, applicants, because they don't know if they're going to be denied if they answer it. And my thing is this, answer it as quick as possible, get it out back to them, and, uh, and, and, and be decisive. Be, 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 be very thoughtful in what you're writing. You know, realize that someone else that doesn't know you is reading it. So present it in, 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 a, um, you know, in, in, a, in a good manner, you know, so that person reading, reading it can understand it from uh, uh, from the words on the paper. And that way you don't leave a lot of gaps, you're unclear about a lot of things, and then they, the rest there soon. Because these are, these are humans, these are individuals that's reading this, that's determined, that's determined, that determines whether you get to the next level. So make sure that you are thoughtful in, in, in your responses, uh, you're clear in your responses. You have all the information. Uh, whether you got to go out and go pay for it, research it, it uh, doesn't matter. Provide the correct information and clear information so you can move to the next step to get your license. Okay? Test date. You receive a notice to appear for examination. You should receive this examination notice at least three weeks prior to the examination date. Um, so during this time, once you get a test date, um, and after you do a live scan fingerprinting, all you have to do right now is work and study, okay? You have to do a lot of studying. And you have to do studying, like I said before, studying on your own is crucial. Don't just rely on the school to provide you with everything you, that you need to know. You have a whole two full books. Uh, you probably have uh, some uh, 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 streaming uh, audio that you can listen to. You got online tests that you can do, paper tests that you can do. You want to utilize all those things to the fullest, okay? And all those are done on your own. Remember that. Take this time to study on your own. Also, too, once you sign up with a school, if you have the funds to sign up for the tuition for the school and also submit your application, I say do it. Okay, 
We'll talk about the price of the application and some prices of some other things that you have to pay to the state board outside of your school tuition. We'll talk about that. But you, and the reason why I encourage all my students to sign, uh, to fill out the application, get that process started, because now you have a date to look forward to, okay? Once you receive that date, no matter what, you need to prepare for that date. A lot of times you sign up for school and you just study and study and study and study. And then you keep studying and then, you know, you get cold feet on signing up the application. Listen, on average, it takes the average individual three to six months just to sign up to a school to get their license. We search all around, call schools, research on the internet, write down a lot of things, grab a lot of literature, and it takes us three to six months just to decide to sign up with a school. Once we get signed up to a school, it can take another three to nine months just to fill out the application. Don't get trapped, don't get caught in this cycle, okay? Be serious about it. It's gonna cost you some money, but you're going into this to make money. So yes, it's gonna cost you. Pay your school tuition, gather your uh, application fee and fill it out, have your school work with you to fill it out and submit it. Get it going so you can get your test date and the quicker you will be towards your role to be a licensed contractor. All right, you must be honest on the application. Okay, they have a work verification experience form. Okay, on that work verification experience form, it's asking you to fill out information on there um, and letting them know that um, where you gain this experience at, okay? Um, it's gonna ask for uh, your name, uh, it's going to ask for what company you work for. If you work for a company, then, um, then you fill out that company's information. Okay. Now, um, on the work verification, when they ask for someone that, that's going to verify, you don't necessarily have, have, have to have a licensed contractor sign off on your experience. And you'll see it on the second part two of the work verification certificate statement, it'll ask you, there's a few options there. A lot of people think that they have to have a licensed contract to sign, okay? They ask you, your employer can sign, a contractor can sign and, and put their license number, a foreman or a supervisor can sign, a journeyman can sign, a fellow employee can sign, a union representative, a business associate, these are the individuals that can sign and check off your experience. Basically, that individual is saying that I seen that person work for the amount of time that they're uh, qualifying uh, uh, for this company or, or, or doing this period, right? So you say, hey, uh, and then mind you, remember you need four years of experience. So it, even if you work for one company for one year, one company for one year, another company for one year, another company for one year, you fill out four work experience verifications statements, okay? And each of those need to have someone that signs off on it, okay? Uh, and it doesn't have to be the same uh, box check, okay? It don't have to be a contractor. It don't have to be a, a business associate. It don't have to be a former supervisor, but if that's who you have, then that's who you have, okay? So that's your work verification. And when you fill out your work verification, you have to understand this. The board wants you to have a minimum of one year hands-on experience. So when you're filling out your description on your work verification, because they're gonna ask you, what experience do you have? What were you actually doing? And you tell them, hey, I was working on this job in charge of this job. Remember, they want you to be at a journeyman's level. So you need to present your work as if you're, uh, as if you have done journeyman type work, okay? So when you word it and you always want to word it, that's why a, a great school should help you out. When you always want to word it, you always want to word it to cover, if you're able to, to cover a, a more broad section of work that surrounds what you do, okay? So if you're doing concrete, you do uh, a broad a framing. You, you say you did framing. You say you, you know you say you did a little bit of plumbing. You did a little bit of electrical. All this is underground work. You did 
uh, uh, digging out footings, you did underground work, you did underground utilities, uh, uh, you ran trenching, you did block walls. So you want to include all this experience so that way when you try to apply for another classification years, years later, you can piggyback off of that time that you submitted for the prior classification. Hopefully I was clear in that, okay? It's all on how you word your application, okay? Because listen, every, every classification you go for, you have to have four year minimum of experience. So one time uh, when I was going for my A license, I went back to the, uh, one of the largest schools in Southern California uh, years ago to get my A license. And the, the, uh, the lady there was telling me, oh, you need to have four year, four more years experience separate from the four years that you already uh, filed for for your C8 license. And I was like, no, no, I work this type of work for A license alone those years that I gained my C8 experience. So I piggyback, I think I piggyback off of two and a half years on what I used, what I submitted for my C8 classification. I piggyback off for of two years onto that and then just went for another two, another uh, year and a half onto the A, cla the a uh, uh, classification application when I went for it. Okay, hopefully that's clear. All right, uh, on the application, they do ask you for a, uh, a tax question. Uh, and basically, they're just asking you about, and I, I brought this up, about the Franchise Tax Board, okay? Uh, any outstanding final liabilities, including taxes, additional additions to tax, penalties, interest, fees that may, address, that may be addressed by the CSLB, Department, of Industrial Relations, that's the DIR, uh, Employment Development Department, the Franchise Tax Board. They name all these departments, okay? Uh, and that's really the tax question, okay? And they try to dig a little bit deep into what you are, uh, into what they may find out later on. A lot of people check no on this, uh, and they really don't have the resources to really uh, uh, dig into it a lot of times, but you still want to be honest. Okay, make sure of that, okay. All right, uh, the CSFB may deny license if the crime is related to the duties, functions, and qualifications of the contractor. Listen, the board is real, real known for, uh, you know, if, you, if you're dealing with something like check fraud, uh, or dealing with people's social security numbers, and you have been convicted of that crime, uh, you definitely want at least seven to 10 years to pass from the date of that crime before you apply for your license. Now listen, just because I said that, that don't mean that you should not give it a shot and file for your license. Do not let anyone tell you just because of what their experience, it should hinder you on moving forward on what you wanna do. There's been so many times where I thought we were not gonna get an individual their license and we got it. Matter of fact, I give you an example for myself. If you look back at some of my videos, I talk about what I went through to get my license. I went to jail from 15 to 21, okay? I did almost, uh, almost six years from 15 to 21. Uh, when I got out, I, I uh, went for my license years, I forget how many years after. Uh, it was quite a bit of years after, uh, definitely over seven, seven years after I, after, um, after my crime um, that I was going for my license, but they denied me and they denied me because of my criminal background. Uh, and I had a, a strong on robbery, a carjack, uh, receiving stolen property, uh, had those things on my jacket. And um, yeah, they denied me and I continue to fight and fight and fight. You guys have to check that video out. And I finally got my license and they put me on a probationary period for two years. That means that they issued my license on a probationary period, which was clearly on my license if you used to look up my license on the state board. But if I was to get into any trouble of any kind during that two year period, I would have lost my license. They didn't care what kind of trouble it was. Um, so uh, there's been times where I have gotten people on or on um, on the probationary period, 
um, and we got the license. We didn't think we were going to get it, but don't let anything hold you back. Don't worry about your criminal background. Uh, 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 they want three to five, they want three years from misdemeanors and seven years from felonies. Okay. Still do not let that hold you back. You're, you won't be the first one that, that got underneath that time to get their license. I guarantee you. And if no one else can help you, you come over here to this school and we'll give you a hand with that. Okay. Uh, sometimes you, they're going to ask you to show, to show re rehabilitation. Okay. Uh, and basically they're just going to ask you like, you know, what, what, what have you done to show, um, uh, you know, what have you been through to show that you have changed? Okay. That's what that basically, uh, amounts to what, what, what have you been through to show that you have changed? You just say, Hey, I, you know, I've changed. I used to be like this. I was young, uh, young and dumb. Uh, uh now things are this way and this way. And, and this is the way I do things, and, and, and I really regret that time. And you just tell them, like, hey, I did my time, and this is what I learned from me doing my time, you know, and now I'm trying to get my license and get things going. So you just want to explain to them that you are rehabilitated, you have learned from it, uh, you do have empathy and sympathy, and, uh, and, and that's about it. Uh, uh, remember, you could be denied if you falsify any information on there. I keep bringing that up. That's very important. These applications get kicked back a lot, okay? One for the work experience, that's the main reason why application gets kicked back for the work experience. And two, the next reason is because someone has falsified some information. Sometimes they give you a shot, a second shot at, sometimes they don't. Okay, uh, you prevent uh, delays with your application by making sure you go through it and don't leave any box or any section or any line item unchecked. Okay, or blank, you put NA if you don't have any information that goes into that section. Okay, you put NA, just remember that. Okay, you don't leave any section blank. Put NA if you don't have an answer for it. All right, accommodation request for examination. You guys have to know this. Listen, if you don't speak English, read English, all you do is have to send in a written request. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and, and with that written request, you ask for a translator uh, that you can have doing your examination, okay? All you do is need to include, I got it right here, include your application fee number and all correspondence to the board, okay? You can get someone that speaks your language to read the examination to you so you can probably answer the, uh, the questions of examination. Please remember that. Do not allow that to hold you back. Okay. Also, too, at our school, we have uh, 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 we just have Spanish uh, uh, material that you can that you can actually learn from. Okay, we do have Spanish material that you can learn from. So make sure you get with us if you find out that another school that you have chosen does not have uh, uh, Spanish speaking material. But that's the only language that we have it in. If you do speak another language, we can definitely work something out and make sure we get you taken care of. It'll just cost an additional fee, okay? Also, too, if you have a disability, okay, um, uh, I would I was going to pull up the disability accommodation form, but it's a simple form uh, that you fill out with your name. Uh, uh, if, if it's just you're in a wheelchair, uh, uh, um, or you need some, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, a path for travel, accessibility, all the tests our touch screen now, uh, uh, all the desks, they have, they do have a hand, uh, dis, uh, hand, uh, desk for dis, a disabled person, a person in a wheelchair at the right height. So you don't actually have to fill out that form. You can just fill it out if you want to, but they are already equipped for that type of disability. So you're good. But any other disability that you may have, uh, uh, that may affect the way you uh, uh, you take a test. I mean, you can even get additional time added on to your examination. You're given three and a half hours per the law and business uh, exam and three and a half hours for a separate three and a half hours for the trade exam. But you can get time extended on, but you, you know, when it comes to that extreme, you will need a, uh, you know, someone with a professional license or certification or doctor or specialist to write you a note to the uh, uh, that you can present with that accommodation request to the board. OK, 
Okay. You can't just go in there and just say, Hey, this is what it is. This is what it is. Uh, uh, so if you, so, so if you have hard time reading, you got a visual, you know, visual Im impairment, a reading disability, uh, deaf, hard of hearing, uh, you need an interpreter, you know, you can ask for extended time on that test. Okay. Or you can ask for someone there to help you out to read that examination and those questions to, to help you pass. Okay. They do provide that. Remember that. But now you do have to research it on the website. It doesn't come within, it is in the forms section, but it doesn't come with the original, uh, um, uh, uh, the original uh, application for a contractor's license. Okay. It doesn't come with it. Okay. You actually have to pull that form up, fill it out and send that in with your application. Okay. Um, and that's it with that. Okay. Um, what if I fail the exam? Oh man, that sucks if you fail the exam. Okay. So uh, it's a lot of us that fail the exam, especially as a lot of individual failing the trade portion of the exam. Um, this trade portion is becoming very difficult for, for everyone to, um, to pass here and, and, and really get going here. So uh, don't feel bad, but know that you have three and a half hours per exam. Okay, three and a half hours for the law, law and business. After you, after you pass that, you have three and a half hours for the trade exam. Okay, um, uh, one, from your test date, you have 18 months to pass. Okay, so that means you can take it unlimited. As long as you pay the, 16, the $60 rescheduling fee. Usually they send, send out your notice that you fail to reschedule, usually they send that out pretty quick. You'll get that within uh, uh, four days, five days, and then you automatically send that back in to ask for a new test date. And then you can get a new test date in a couple of weeks, man. So uh, uh, they'll, they'll turn that around. So you can take it as many times you want within an 18 month period. You should be able to pass, even if they got seven different tests for the exam that you failed. You should be able to see all seven or nine different tests in that period, if you have not passed um, uh, 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 after multiple tries, okay? But keep trying, write down notes, r realize what you had challenges with, write it down, research it, memorize it. That's what it's all about, it's about memorizing it and then go back at it and tack it again, okay? One of the things that I did when I was taking the test, I, the, the, the test allows you to set questions to the side that you have issues with, that you're not sure on. But also to remember this, as you set those questions to the side, there's other questions that answer those questions. Okay. So you'll be able to eliminate those questions by other questions. And then um, you, 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 you go through the whole test and then I'll, 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 I'll have all the questions that I'm unsure about to the side on the computer screen, and then I'll go use the restroom, splash some water on my face, you know, uh, I'll take a breather. You can't leave the building, but you can go use, use the restroom. Then I'll come back in there and I'll just focus on those questions I was unsure about. And I'll go through them, make sure I'm looking at my time, and I'll go ahead and complete that exam. Okay. Um, I, uh, I have three classifications. I take in the, the three different trade exams and the law one time, okay? Um, if you pass one exam, you just have to re retake the one that you failed, okay? They don't take back the one that you passed, okay? The cost to reschedule is $60 every time. Um, and then you just automatically, as soon as they send in, I said, you know, you could take another test within a, a two to three week period, okay? And that's about it with that. Uh, if you do fail your trade exam, make sure you give us a call. We're currently designing uh, 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 trade studies, particularly just trade studies, okay? We're doing pre-recorded uh, trade study classes. We're a little bit slow with it right now, but we're the only school that's offering this right now. There's no other school offering uh, 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 trade classes. The only thing that we teach as a school uh, to get your license when it deals with the trade is trade math. Every trade has math, so that's what we take care of. But we're doing individual classification trade uh, pre-recorded classes, so concrete uh, trade classes. We're doing, and it's dealing with your actual particular trade. So it's the exciting thing about us. 
about that, that we're venturing into that direction so we can help individuals that's having a hard time uh, passing a trade exam and we're lowering the cost on it as well. <clears throat> it was a high cost for us to actually, we used to, we currently, and we used to actually design a course uh, to fit the areas that you were missing of your trade exam. And then you was paying anywhere from three to 500 for us to, you know, tailor a, 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 a class for you to make sure that you pass that trade exam on the next next chance. Um, and that was quite quite a bit expensive and extensive on our end as far as the research. So what we're doing is we, we're, we're um, doing some pre-recorded trade uh, courses that way you can just purchase them on, on our website or call us and we'll you know send you a digital copy and then you can do a self-study uh with that and you can constantly pull that up up into the the date of your test uh and that that i think that'll work out pretty good all right so uh what if you pass the exam that's the exciting part now mind you listen once you at once you're at the exam okay and you finish the exam Literally, right there on the spot, you raise your hand, say, hey, I'm done. Listen, the proctor comes right over and hit two buttons, sign in, click enter, and your score pops up right there on the screen. There's no breather. There's no wait. Hold up. I'm not ready. No, it pops up right there. Let you know if you pass or fail right there on the spot. Okay? You'll be taking the test. People will get done before you, and you'll hear people like, yes. Oh. Man, oh man, you're here all day long in there as long as you're in there, okay? Uh, so uh, if you pass both the law and business exam, uh, uh, now all you have to pay is the license fee, which we'll talk about. Uh, uh, if you have it, once you pay, if you if you pass both, you just have to pay the license fee, uh, which actually gets you your license card. Remember, before that, all you paid was the was uh to to accept your application to process your application and then a live scan fingerprinting now you're paying for your actual license uh and then you have to pay for your fifteen thousand dollar bond uh that bond is really an insurance that the board has out for you you know uh it's also known as by law that you're not actually supposed to advertise that you're insured and bonded uh when you're accounting for this fifteen thousand dollar bond that $15,000 bond, bond is actually an assurance that the board has over your head in case you do not meet your obligations, okay? That bond is not for you. That bond is in case you screw up. They have money that they can pull from to pay the consumer, okay? Um, once you have that bond, pay for your license fee, the board will issue your license number, and then you are a contractor. Um, then, then there's more, okay? Make sure you check out the next uh, uh, portion, part four. Um, then they're gonna be part five, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up, okay? Uh, uh, we'll give you a lot of information there. Um, uh, remember, it's a five-part series. Thank you for hanging in to this point. I really appreciate you. Uh, make sure you share this with someone that needs to see this, that's looking to become a California licensed contractor. Get this in their hands so they can know everything that they need to know and cut down that three that uh, 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 three to six month time that it takes them to get their license. Okay, you got everything. I'm providing everything here at your feet that you need to know to get your license. You got no more excuses. Okay, check out the rest of these videos. I will be posting a, a, a four and five up here shortly. I'm glad you guys are joining it. My construction entrepreneurs. Hustle hard, then hustle harder. Catch you on the next one.